Parker Retzoff had a chance of winning on Saturday night at Daytona, and now he's on an apology tour. Welcome back to Break Hard, I'm Matt. It is absolutely bonkers that Parker Retzloff is essentially on an apology tour this week because Richard Childress Racing and Chevrolet are upset that he pushed a Ford to victory on Saturday night at Daytona when Harrison Burton picked up his first ever NASCAR Cup Series win. So let me take you back to what happened real quick. On that final restart, Harrison Burton's leading the outside line. Parker Retzloff is behind him. Kyle Busch leading the inside line. He wanted, he wanted, let me emphasize that one more time. He wanted the 20 car of Christopher Bell behind him to help push him and hopefully get to victory and extend his win streak, get him into the playoffs. So Parker Retzloff pushes the 21 car because Parker Retzloff is in his second ever NASCAR Cup Series start. He has his Xfinity sponsor Funk Away on it. They've been very supportive of him in the Xfinity Series. He's now in position to possibly win his second ever start like he's Jamie McMurray. And instead, this week, he gets a P7 finish. And instead of celebrating that and being like, dang, dude, that's a pretty good run for your second second ever race. He's out here apologizing, saying that that's not the way I wanted it to end. Obviously, I wish I would have done things differently. Um, you know, I'm not going to get into what happened or what's going to happen on the back end and all those details. And by the sounds of it, he's facing repercussions. He's facing some sort of penalty from Richard Childress Racing and from Chevrolet. And that is astoundingly stupid to me. RCR, they get their feelings hurt a lot, right? They're putting out press releases constantly. They're not happy with the way NASCAR is doing things. They're not happy with the way anybody's doing things. Things on the internet just aren't real, even though this audio very much just came from your, your number three channel. Everything with RCR right now is just a bit of a disaster. They need a better PR department. But the fact that Chevrolet is mad about this is absolutely astounding to me because Parker Retzloff did nothing wrong. He did what he needed to do, which was prioritize what Parker was going to, what was going to be best for Parker in that moment. And he did push Harrison Burton in the 21 car to victory lane. Why? Because it gave him the best shot at trying to win that race. Instead, he ends up with a P7 finish. You know, maybe it could have been better if he had a little bit more experience and kind of understood what was going to happen there at the end of the race when everything got a little bit chaotic coming to the line. But for the most part, Parker Retzloff did absolutely nothing wrong. And now he's out here having to apologize. And it's just very on brand. And it sucks for him because if this ends up costing him, uh, you know, a chance with Chevrolet in the future, stupid. So why is RCR actually so upset about it? Well, it comes from the fact that Parker is racing for the 62 car Beard Motorsports and RCR preps, prepares, and they have an alliance with that Beard Motorsports team. So essentially you're thinking of it as a de facto third RCR car out there uh, for this race. General consensus is, hey, you're going to work with the RCR cars and help get them in position if you're in position to do that. Well, Parker maybe was in position to do that, but he wasn't actually in position to do that. So RCR is viewing this as like a betrayal of them. Hey, one of our team cars essentially didn't help the other team car put him in victory lane. Listen, you shouldn't be relying on 21-year-old Parker Retzloff from the Xfinity Series to help put you into the playoffs. You should already be there on speed and not have to worry about a wild card race at Daytona to get you there. So, yeah, it stinks for Kyle Busch. I think we all want to see his win streak continue because it's probably a record that will never be broken in NASCAR, at least not for a very long time. And it would be cool to see him continue to extend that streak. But to get mad at Parker Retzloff for not getting you to victory lane... When you had 25 other chances, 24 other chances rather, before Saturday night, uh, why are you mad at Parker? Be mad at yourself for not having speed up until essentially the last like couple of weeks. That's on RCR. That's not on Parker Retzloff. Parker did what he needed to do. Imagine Jay McMurray in his second ever NASCAR Cup Series race, just pulling over when he was subbing for Sterling Marlin and won that race uh, in the fall. Imagine him just being like, oh, well, you know, I really wanted to help out our team. No, dude. Jay McMurray built a career, basically springboarding off of that win. Good for him. He always would have had a career, but that win really helped propel him into a full-time NASCAR Cup Series uh, uh, ride. The guy in Parker Retzoff, why are we even talking about this? And then I see people being like, well, isn't this kind of like race manipulation from Chevy and, and RCR in this situation? Uh, if he would have, you know, just dumped the 21 there, not pushed him, you know, hit the brakes into turn one and let that gap get so big. You can argue that it is, especially if it's over the radio. There's a radio transcript of it and everything that goes along with that. But right now we're talking about hypotheticals. Oh, well, they wanted him to do that. Okay, but he didn't actually do that. So you can't really penalize them for that. Uh, so yeah, it is, that's a tough road to go down. But I mean, they did say, hey, don't push this 21 car to victory lane. You're in a draft, dude. You're trying to get the best result for yourself. 
Parker Retzloff, his sponsor does not care that Richard Childers Racing wants him to not push that 21 car. His sponsor wants him to finish as high up as possible. RCR doesn't care. RCR is like, dude, finish back in the 20s as long as you make sure that, you know, that 21 car doesn't win and the 8 car does. They don't care about Parker Retzloff and his future in that moment. Parker cares about his future in that moment, and he wants to do good for his sponsor that he has carried or that has supported him for so long. So... The fact that we're continuing to have this conversation on a Wednesday after this race is, you know, ludicrous. It's banana land. It's so stupid that RCR and Chevrolet are upset about this. It's racing. Things happen. And man, the OEM alliance or allegiance rather at the end of these races has become just mind numbingly stupid to have to deal with. You know, every single time we go to a drafting track, it's like, well, they're not going to work with him. Listen, when it gets down to the last five laps, it doesn't matter if you have a bow tie, a blue oval, or a Toyota logo on the front of your car. You are absolutely going to work with whoever you can to try to put yourself in position to win that race. And that's what Parker Retzloff did, and he didn't do anything wrong. So the fact that he has to go on essentially an apology tour on SiriusXM is so stupid. And I'm interested to hear what other people's thoughts are about this, because in my opinion, RCR is coming off super petty, super childish, much like a lot of their press releases lately, much like how they kind of acted, you know, out in the public in recent years at this point. And Parker did nothing wrong in this situation. So hopefully Parker Retzloff gets a I think he's a talent. I think he, kids got some talent. I think in better equipment, you could see him contend for race wins. He overachieves uh, a fair amount in that Jordan Anderson car. So, yeah. Interested to see what Parker Retzloff future holds. Not sure if it's going to be with Chevrolet, but let me know in the comments what you think about this whole situation. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Break Hard Blog.